Hey folks, good day to you. This is uh, VM Explorer, and this in this part of my uh, Gen 5 build, we're going to be going over the uh, motherboard installation and the heat sinks and a few other things. Uh, but before we start, uh, a couple things. You're going to need to get the motherboard installed. So one, you probably want to have a decent uh, screwdriver kit. Uh, this is just a simple kit, you know, I found on uh, Amazon, not too expensive. Got a lot of a lot of great tools uh, that you can use for doing stuff. In fact, the screwdriver comes in handy to use when you're making videos to point things out. So, <laughs> also I recommend uh, just a little bucket. You know, I call this my bit buckets where all my screws go in. Comes in real handy when you're trying to get things done. And then, of course, lastly for the motherboard install, which I talked about in the previous video, uh, these case stands. So the motherboard install not too difficult. Uh, pretty easy to do. Uh, once you've got your uh, power routed, this is the actual splitter I was talking about for the two CPUs, and your power routed here, it's a matter of just getting it uh, bolted into uh, place. Now, the trick with this motherboard, as I pointed out, were those case stands. There's one that's going to go here, 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 and up in this top right corner over here. So once you've got those uh, pushed into the motherboard, then you just lay it in. It's not too difficult. Of course, put your slot cover in first and bend up the grounding strips for your... Uh, network adapters, and it's uh, pretty simple. Bolt it all down, you're good to go. Just make sure that the post stands that are on the back side of this, you actually have a bolt th a bolt they go into. If you don't move these two bolt or uh, post stands were right here and there on the actual case, they're gonna touch the back of these memory chips. That's not a good thing. You need to remove those, pull one out, add it over here, Put in the two extra uh, plastic uh, post stands that I talked about, all right? Put those in, drop it in, you're good to go. This one's a little bit different. I did add a, a one terabyte uh, NVMe drive that I'll use for some basic VMware functions like deploying VMs, things like that if I need to, maybe migrating a few things. It just comes in handy to have a little extra space outside of vSAN. Uh, you might notice that uh, one of the processors is missing. That's right, I haven't mounted it yet, and that's something I want to talk to you about first. So when we look at used processors, especially Xeons, right, uh, you know, there, there's a lot of good quality ones out there uh, on eBay. This processor, I think, cost me about $25 for eight cores. Not a bad deal. The trick to these is you need to look at the back side of these processors, and if you look right in the middle there, where those capacitors are, what you're looking for is white, fluffy, kind of flaky stuff. It looks kind of like battery acid, and that's an indication that the capacitors have gone bad and have ruptured and have started to leak. If you get a used processor like this, always check the backside first, and also check those pins. Look for scoring, look for marks. You know, you can see up in the upper right hand corner, there's a little mark right there. I took a, a good photo uh, of that and made sure it was nice and clean, and it was. It's just used. Uh, but also, just look at look at all those pins. Make sure they're nice and clean, but mainly check for that uh, issues with the capacitors. So, these are good chips. They haven't probably been overclocked. They haven't been overheated. You know, heat kills things. Heat kills hard disks, power supplies. And if you overclock your processor and don't cool it pro properly, your capacitors are going to bleed, right? So definitely check those out. Make sure your processors are in good shape before you just stick them into your case. And speaking of cooling, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about this cooler I bought. This was the first cooler I bought. This one was a $10 cooler. That's right, $10 shipped. It kind of has a Zalman look to it. Uh, it would have fit really well. The problem is the seller took, I don't know, about two months to ship it to me. It was just a big mess. It uses this uh, plastic ring here, and it snaps in on top. These little clips right here go on it. The problem with this thing is, is it probably weighs... <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, a couple ounces. It's super lightweight. This cooler never would have worked for the Xeon processors. It would have overheated them. Uh, though they say they're built for 2011 uh, processors, I would highly not recommend this. They also call this kind of like a hydrocool cooler or uh, things like that. But when it came in, you can clearly see that, though they told me it was supported for 100 watts, on the box you can clearly say, show it shows 75 watts. So... Not a good cooler. Do not recommend it. Do not look with it. Go with it at all. If you're looking for an economy cooler and you're not doing overclocking, uh, this is the one that uh, I've had good luck with so far. Uh, this one by Deepcool, uh, Gamax uh, 400. Uh, the one thing I like about it is 
all the different mounting options. You can see here it covers AMD, covers a lot of different Intels, which is nice. Uh, it's got a nice weight to it, you know. It's got the, the heat pipe to go up in, the cooling fans, and then the mounts for the 2011. So that should work out uh, pretty darn good. All right, so the last thing I wanted to show you about the case, we talked about the case moves last time. And one of the things we, I mentioned was moving that mount out of the way of the hard disks here and moving it over here. I just wanted to show you real quick what that's going to look like. And coming up in our next part, we'll be actually doing the drive install. So this guy's going to go, yep, that way. There we go. Sorry about that. Goes on the bottom there, lays on the top, and then you bolt it in. You can mount your drives. So, folks, that was a, a real quick overview. In the next video, we'll be doing the hard disks and the mounts. We'll be covering the video card and the uh, controller cards here, getting them installed, and wrapping up this series of my case build. So thanks so much for watching, and do hit subscribe below.